The year 2015 sees the end of the Millennium Development Goals and we know now that we will not fulfil those promises made to poor people. And people have said we should go back to basics and ask why did we not succeed with the MDGs? I believe Catholic social teaching provides the answer to that question. Pope Paul VI wrote the great encyclical The Development of Peoples in 1967 and he set out the problem very clearly that people have got to be at the heart of their own development, that there's an urgency about the scandal of poverty and hunger in the world, that the wealthy nations need to take their responsibilities seriously, and that there can be no justice without a real sharing of our resources with the poor. And he talked about overdevelopment being the greatest sin of all. And we know now, through the overdevelopment of the Western world, we have seen the problem of climate change and the dreadful crisis it has created for the poorest people in the world. It was a prophetic document and we could very usefully revisit again when we look at what would happen in the next phase of development. 20 years later, Pope John Paul II revisited the issue, saying, why is it that 20 years on, in fact, the gap between rich and poor has grown rather than been reduced? And he had a very critical analysis of both the capitalist system and the Marxist system, which was prevalent at that time, saying that neither re reacted or responded to the needs of people. And he introduced two very important concepts to this discourse. One was the one of human rights. And he said there can be no true human development without human rights. And that was a real challenge to particularly the Western world, uh, because human rights in terms of their economic rights, social rights, were things that the West had ignored, focusing more on the, uh, the, the political rights denied by communism. And he also talked about structural sin. He said the reason why poverty is growing is that the underlying causes of poverty, economic, social, political, the banking system, the trading system, this is what was driving the gro growing gap between rich and poor. And he said that we must denounce those uh, economic and social and political mechanisms that mean that some people live in great wealth while the rest are condemned to a life of poverty. It was very challenging stuff. And again, we should revisit those thoughts of John Paul. Two years ago, Pope Benedict revisited this issue on the 40th anniversary of Pope Paul's encyclical with his encyclical, Love in Truth. And he looks now at the problem with the current financial crisis. And he has introduced another element that we need to take seriously, that of gift. He says that there can be no real equalizing of the situation of the world until those who have most are prepared to let go and to give in gift to those that don't. That it is impossible for the weak to negotiate justice with the strong. And the strong have a, an, are an obligation in solidarity that we are responsible one to each other and back again. And that that is something that would really change the way that we relate between the wealthy countries and the poorest. That's a real challenge, that we're prepared to let go, that it's not just a question of negotiating to see what's best for me. I've heard a very prominent European leader say in relation to the negotiation of the new development goals, that he will concede nothing that will be bad for his country. Well, if we proceed on that basis, we will never succeed. And I think Catholic social teaching challenges all of us to that openness of spirit and generosity that means that the earth's resources would be available for all, as Pope Paul VI said they should be. Mm -hmm.